Last math counts mini of the year, you know I have some tough problems for you. They're geometry problems, so I got my man Harvey here. He's amazing at geometry. Ready to go? Yeah, I know you're always ready. Here we go. We got a shape here that we can fold along these dashed lines to form a three-dimensional polyhedron of some sort, and we have to find the volume of this polyhedron. You see it, Harv? Yeah, yeah, I know. You see everything, even stuff that's not even there. All right, what do you see, Harv? You see prism minus a pyramid. Yeah, what, what, what? Hey, wait, wait, where are you going? Where are you going? I'll call you when I have a hard problem. All right, thanks, Harv. No Harvey? Uh, no problem. We got this. We got this. We can do this. I don't see it. I don't see it. Do you see it? I, I, I don't have a piece of paper I'd make it for us, but I, I'm going to try to draw this. I'm going to try to draw what happens when this folds up, and then maybe I'll be able to see what's going on. I'm going to start with this rectangle. It's gonna, I'm going to fold this triangle up, so I'm going to picture this rectangle is going to be in the back. Put this rectangle in the back. I'm going to go ahead and label the sides 7 and 4. So I'm going to fold this triangle up. We're going to pretend this thing's sitting on a table. So you fold this little equilateral triangle up like this. And I'm going to bring these flaps over so that these fours will line up with, with these fours here. These flaps will come over. These two fours will line up along a seam. These fours match up, make a little seam here coming up from our table. And then they'll meet at a point out here. And when this triangle comes down, that point will hit there, and we'll have these two edges going back to these two corners. These two edges going back to these two corners, and these edges have length 5. So let's kind of imagine this sitting on a table, sitting on a triangle, and this is, this is what the shape looks like, and I don't have a formula for a shape that looks like that. I'm trying to see if you think about it, you've got this little triangle sitting on the you got a rectangle coming up the back and then rectangles, triangle. Hey, wait, prism? Prism's like a prism in your science class. You know those, little, those glass prisms that you know light shines through, forms a rainbow? That's what you'd get if you continued the seam all the way up. Instead of having these weird things over here, if we had rectangles here that folded over to form the other two faces, you'd be making a prism. It'd look like this. Start with that rectangle in the back, that 7x4 rectangle. We have our triangular base at the bottom. Bring the seam all the way up. Make a prism, like those prisms in science class. But this has this top thing that's all different. It's like, it's like we chopped off a corner of our prism. Chopped here, chopped here, and chopped this off. So we started with the prism, and then we chopped this piece off here. And this piece, we have this triangular face up here, it's the same as the triangle at the bottom, and then this, this is perpendicular to it, this is part of the height, it's a pyramid. It's a triangular pyramid. There's a triangular base here, and then there's the height. So this over here is exactly what Harv said it was. Prism minus a pyramid. You lop this little piece off, you get that. So now all we have to do is find the volume of the, the whole prism, and then this little pyramid piece that we're going to pop off, and then we'll just take the difference. We need to start off by getting the area of the base, this triangle down here, this equilateral triangle. Well, we got this is 4. We're going to try to find the height. Just split that in half. These reach 2. Use the Pythagorean theorem. 4 squared is 16. Minus 2 squared is 4. Gives us 12. Take the square root of 12. You get 2 times the square root of 3 is the height. So the area of this equilateral triangle is 4 times 2 root 3. Divide by 2 because it's a triangle. The area of the base is 4 times this square root of 3. And to get the volume of the prism, we multiply by the height. The whole height here is 7. And then we're going to subtract off the volume of the pyramid. Now the base, this base up here, has area 4 times the square root of 3. We already figured that out because it's the same as this base down here. And we're going to multiply by the height. Well, this whole height of the prism is 7. The seam is 4. So this little piece right here is 3. So we're going to take the area of the base, times that height of 3. Then we're going to divide by 3, because volume of a pyramid is the area of the base, times the height, divide by 3. These 3's will cancel. Volume of our prisms, 7 times 4, 28 square root of 3. Subtract 4 square root of 3 for the volume of the pyramid. We have 24 times the square root of 3 cubic inches is the volume of this shape that we form. And we got that without Harvey at all. All right, we are ready for the next problem. Here we go. We have a circle. 
tangent to two sides of this equilateral triangle. And we're given the area of this shaded region is 100. And the area of this shaded region is 50. We want the ratio of the area of the triangle to the area of the circle. That's a weird thing to look for, but... All right, here we go. we got these weird, weird regions, the oddly shaped regions. Now I know how to handle that. You break up the diagram into pieces you can handle. I'm going to go after that region out there first. I'm going to draw this. And I'm going to draw a radius to a point of tangency. I love doing that because I get right angles. And this little weird shape out here is going to be the area of this quadrilateral minus the area of the sector because I know how to handle sectors. Right angle. This is 60 degrees because we have an equilateral triangle. Don't know what this angle is. Need that angle for the sector. Don't know what it is. Big old question mark. Now I could go ahead and draw another radius here. And then this thing is the whole sector minus the triangle, but I don't know what that angle is either. Oh, stuck. What's that? Oh, oh, you're back, Harp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm stuck. Very stuck. Can you help me out? What's that? Oh, you read an article somewhere that said teachers should be less helpful. Well, you're doing a bang-up job of that, Harvey. Come on. Oh, no, you're just going to stand there and watch? All right, you can watch, but not if you have that look on your face. All right, that, that's better. It'd be even better if you helped, but all right. Still stuck. Um, I'm a little desperate. I'm going to cut this in half. Just going to split it in half. You got some symmetry going on. You're going to equal a triangle, got a circle, cut it in half. Makes 30, 60, 90 triangles. That's another reason I love cutting equilateral triangles in half. You get 30, 60, 90 triangles, and those are fun. Saw that on the last problem, too. And well, this region down here, that's area 100, splits into two fifties. Because again, we got this symmetry going on. That's, the, that's actually really cool. Check this out. This 50 matches that 50. You got the symmetry going on, so this 50 matches a 50 in here too. So I could, you know, this this shaded region down here, these this area equals the sum of these two areas out here. Get these two pieces here and make that piece there. That tells me that this whole circle, and we care about the area of the circle, right? We care about the area of the circle. This whole circle has the same area as this weirdly shaped region right here. Because I can take this area that's outside here and stuff it in the corners here. This area down here is the same as the total area of these corners. And that's interesting because now my triangle, which I also care about, I can think of my triangle as the area of the circle. Take these pieces and stuff them here, plus this weird symbol up here. That's kind of confusing. This diagram's a mess. I just made, I think, a key discovery. So I'm going to start with a new diagram here. Fresh diagram. I'm going to focus just on what I... What I was just thinking about here, I got the area of the triangle is equal to the area of the circle. Okay, the area of the circle, and I said that this shaded region out here, that area equals the sum of these two regions here. All right, so this piece has area that's the same as the area of the circle. So my triangle is equal to the area of the circle plus this Star Trek looking thing up here, plus the area of the Star Trek looking thing up here. All right, so this is awesome. Hey, no, 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 don't say anything, Harp. No, 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 don't, don't need your help anymore. Right, I got this, because if you start talking, you'll take credit for everything. No, I got this. I got this, because I've got the area of the triangle, area of the circle. I want the ratio of these two. So now I just divide both sides of this by the area of the circle. And then I'll bet something magical happens, because over here on the left, I have exactly what I'm looking for. Area of the triangle divided by the area of the circle. That's what I'm looking for. Keep your eye on the ball. Area of the circle, when I divide by the area of the circle, I just get one. Plus I get this Star Trek looking thing divided by the area of the circle. Oh, not quite there. All right, so now I just have to, I, area of the circle, that's easy. That's just pi r squared. Don't know what r is, but it's so a ratio. Maybe those R's will cancel out, and that'll be awesome. So the Star Trek looking thing, though, I need to go after that. I'm going to use that same strategy I was talking about before. I got this weird shaped region. I'm going to cut things up into pieces I can handle. I'm going to draw these two radii to points of tangency for those right, right angles. And now I can look at the Star Trek thingy. 
my Star Trek thingy. That's just equal to this quadrilateral here. This quadrilateral minus this sector. All right, now going after sectors last time didn't work out so well, but I think this time it's going to be different because I know all these angles. This is an equilateral triangle. This is 60 degrees up here. That 60 degrees means I can just you know drop that line. Form these 30, 60, 90 triangles that I like so much. This is 30, this is 60, this is R, we're going to call this R, 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is the short leg, the long leg is R root 3. And this is 60 as well. And so now I know what my sector is. I had these two 60s, I get 120, the sector's a third of a circle. This is golden, we're all set now. All right, so we have 1 plus... In the denominator, we have the area of the circle. That's pi r squared. Pi r squared. And then the area of the quadrilateral here, we have two of these 30, 60, 90 triangles. To find the area of one of these 30, 60, 90 triangles, multiply the legs, get r squared root 3, divide by 2, r squared root 3 over 2. But I have two of them. Add those two up, we get the area of r squared root 3 for the entire quadrilateral. And then I subtract off my sector which is one-third the area of, a, of the circle. And there we go. Sure enough, I'm going to go ahead and factor out that r squared from the top. And we see that our r squareds do indeed cancel. Beautiful. Then we can simplify this a little bit, and we get 1 plus the square root of 3 over pi, Minus the two pi's cancel, minus one third. Finally, we can simplify that. That is just two thirds plus root three over pi. All that without harv. Oh yeah, you were really helpful by not being helpful.